Okay, my friends, prepare for another shocker du jour, talking about tendons. And I am going to tell you right now, this is my statement, is that that right there is an Achilles tendon from some gigantic creature. And these are the fibers this guy's climbing on. I have one here that's, you know, quite a bit smaller, obviously, but it is the same fiber. And I'm going to show you this very carefully. And I can show you the same crust that this has on it. You see that, how it's broken off here? Same thing you're going to see right there. All right, so I'm going to show you all this in a microscope. And I'm going to show you how I can say it is organic. And it is the same as one of these Achilles tendon fibers. And then I'm going to get very deep. Chemistry to whole nine yards. All right, I think I showed you, or I will show you very clearly, this is the slurpee around the tendon. And that would have slid in through this membrane when it was attached. This is, is a small one of these. Now, I'm going to explain to you exactly why I can say, make that statement and make it stick. We're going to look at this in a microscope, and you're going to see the fabric that this is constructed of. And what is inside of it is this very, very tough, durable stuff, which is the tendon. And that's the, the crust. Now, why do I say it's a crust? You see right there? Let me make sure you can see that all right. You see that scale coming off of there? <clears throat> that is the slurpee. You see how it's all wrinkly? You see that? You see the wrinkles all over? That's because it, was, it died standing up and all of that stuff sort of, you know, oozed its way down. But it still encapsulates it. And the reason this moss is growing there is because it's there's still nutrition in this as far as blood goes it's still a bloody gooey substance and wherever it's shaded a lot you're going to get this moss loves to eat that now this doesn't have the red red blood that's the key you have very little red blood in there but you have a lot of body fluids and gooey substances that are edible to these plants. But very little blood in the tendons themselves. As I think I showed you here, how the blood ran down to the bottom. It must have died somehow like this or something like that. And there is blood in here, but very little. It's almost all connective tissue. So, <clears throat> but I'm going to show you the surface of, of the top of this. And you'll see it's the same as that slurpier, which is a fibrous coating around the, the tendon. And the, and the tendon is right there. Now, this relates to these ammonites. This is the cool thing. See, don't forget how the slurpee is all broken off and we're down underneath where the tendon is it would slide through there they don't slide a whole lot they just slide enough so that they can move against each other so when you twist you got like a whole batch of these layers when they twist they have to do a little of this and a little of that not they're not going to do this but they got to do a little and that's what this slurpee is for and that right there my friends All right, I was thinking, I hope I wasn't out of focus a long time, but maybe I was, who knows. That is Devil's Tower, and that is a tendon, Achilles tendon. And that's all it is, is Achilles tendon. It's not even the whole foot, you know, the whole leg. The Achilles tendon just hangs off the back. It runs up the side, it goes like, just like this up to the calf muscle, and, and it's, it gives you that, energy for your leg to move your calf um, but there is a tendinous part in there that's really that's tough man your, your tendons in your 
in your ankles, they're tough. And, uh, but occasionally they break. And what happens when they break is you get what's called a wrinkle zone. And that's it right there. That's the wrinkle zone. You see at the top, see how it's nice and smooth down here? Up here it's all wrinkly looking. And I have other shots to show it very, very well. But that's exactly what happens. They're unintentional, all of a sudden they break, they go bang, and you get all that wrinkle. All right, it doesn't even get clearer than this. That's the wrinkle zone. And they break just as flat as a pancake. And these are all wrinkly, and the fabric's all wrinkly back. Down here, it just turns into those normal fibers. Those are a, a blocky fiber. You know, as long as I've had this, I didn't re recognize this. You see how flat that is? This is a relaxed tendon. It's just laying there flat. That's how I always thought about this. And of course, this one's very, very flat too. And this one's very flat. Then I realized this one's not. That one's wrinkly. It's got a little wrinkle to it. And I started I just looking at it, thinking to myself, why would that be? Well, it appears that this thing was lying down in an awkward position. You may not be able to see that, but you may. Right there, this is all blood running down to here. It was askew a little bit. So this was a bit flat, this was flat, this was flat, and this was taking the brunt of the twist. That's why it's got that wrinkly look to it. The other ones are just perfectly flat. It's, it's no question whatsoever, it's a separate layer. It's a separate layer. I mean, I, I, I know I've shown you that in a microscope. If you didn't see it, go back and look again. You see, it's a separate layer. You see it? I mean, there's no way you can miss it. As a matter of fact, let's look at that, because I can see there's still red blood there which is, is right under the slurpy layer, there's sort of a, well, let's look at it. This is blowing my mind. I was watching, they were drilling a rock at Perseverance. They were doing a core sample. And I could see this, and then I could see this in the sample that they were drilling. All right, watch this. Hold on a second. This is a mind blower. I was watching the, the Cure, uh, Perseverance rover drilled a core into the Martian rock. And they found silica. They were all excited because this is loaded with silica. That's feldspar. All right, this is the Slurpee. Now, this is the layer of Slurpee. Below it, I could see exactly the same thing. Below it, down there, is where you get into the, the bloody-ish stuff that that slurpy layer rides on. And then below that is the actual tendon. But I could see the identical thing when they were drilling. You could see this, and then you could see this. It, 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 and, and they said it's loaded with silicates, and it's all the same things that are in life. But you see all these fibers? Everything looks better when you get a little moisture on it. Hold on a second. You see how that comes back almost instantly bloody. This will dry up very quick. I'll help it with here. You see that? Look at that. That's the underneath of the slurpy layer. And then we come up. That is the slurpy layer. It's the same, exact same thing that's on the lung. No difference whatsoever. And that's how, you know, slippery and slimy it is underneath. Because it has to move. Like I said, they have to be able to bend. And that's it right there. And that right there, that spot is peeling off. It's just peeling off. And the moss is growing on the, the remainder of the blood that's still in there. 
It would love to be growing out of that, I can tell you right now. It would grow on that just as fabulously as you could believe. Okay, my friends. This is a lung. That there is no question about. It's been DNA tested. It's a human lung. And it is right here, but I'm going to keep it dark here so you can see it because I'm going to get up close to it. Now, what you're seeing, a lung, what does a lung do? Well, it has to expand and contract and expand and contract and expand and contract all day long, 24 hours a day. Well, what happens with that Slurpee that I was talking about on your your tendons? They have to pull and come back and pull and come back and pull and come back. And that's the, they're actually identical to these. To the, to the pleura on the lung, which is the rubber bag. It's a big fabric rubber bag that holds your lung so that it can do this and do that and do this. And how does it do it? It does it with all these little fibers. You see the little fibers here? And then it has like a bloody matrix. It's like a, there's, there's, it's a gooey substance with all these fibers in it. That's all you really need to know. It's like a rubber mat with fibers connective tissue. Well, what are we looking at here? Hold on. That is the, uh, that's the lung we're just looking at right there. All right, so here it is. All right, now that is the lung right there. Now that is the block, which I say is a tendon. And I say that's the slurpee on the tendon. And you can easily see it's it's disassociated from the, the tendon that's inside, and I showed you all the fibers running through the inside here. Now, this, I tell, I'm going to tell you right now, is identical to that fabric. So I'm putting this in the microscope right now. All right, it's in the microscope. Let me turn the lights off. You can see it's in the microscope. All right, you see what? This is. All right, you see it? It's up there. That's <laughs> what's in the microscope. That's the, the um, tendon fiber. It's the same stuff. It's a slurpee. It's just like it's slurpee on that. All right, that's, it's, it's not the same as fascia. It's got to have a wiggle room to it. It's got to have some slipperiness back and forth. That's what this, this stuff does. The fascia is a little different. It's a, it's a fabric fiber filled fluid highway. It's a little different than this. This is more of a rubber bag, basically. It's like a coating and, and around the lung and around every part of your body that has to move and stretch and everything has a fascia coating around it. And they all do it, but some of them have dents like that. And I mean, that's pretty dense because I have one here that's halfway eroded off. This one's completely eroded off. All of that stuff is gone. It's all the way down into the alveoli. You see that? That's alveoli. See these little circles? That's these. You see this blood here? These are these little dots. There was blood in there. And there's a little flap. It's, it's different than the rest of the, the pleura. And they would call this pleura. This has one. And it's different than the rest of the lung. And anatomy, they don't understand this yet. That's a whole separate piece. And I, I found in my mud fossils over and over, so I can prove this. It's nothing I can't prove. It is a new separate piece. All right, and it has another function that I, that I don't think they understand. It also transfers the fluid-filled highways of this organ's fluid-filled highway interstitium. It transfers this, two little dots come out of it, and, and it transfers it to the next organ or to a body part. But this chemistry of this is going to be different from the chemistry that it's going to transfer it into. So there must be some way of it understanding. I'm working with acids over here. I'm working with salts over here. I'm working with, you know, whatever it is, blood. Because the chemistry of every part of your body is designed to do different type of chemistry. Different type of chemistry means a different type of coating to protect you. You can't protect your stomach, acids, 
from the same quoting you have on your lung. It won't work. They're totally different. And it needs different chemistry. That's a whole other issue. Everything is a deep, deep subject when you start to back off and think about things. <laughs> All right, see that? That's the lung. And that's the slurpee that's around the tendon. And the tendon will have um, that slurpee will, will get saggy like it does on, on um, Devil's Tower because it's just naturally sagging down. And then at the very top, there'll be a wrinkle zone, which the actual tendon itself, which is inside, will, will sort of waffle because it's, it's like a, a, a stretched band snapping and coming back and wrinkling for a certain distance and then it goes straight again. Let me show you that. All right, now this is about a core sample they just took from Mars to see what is the likelihood of any life ever being there. They don't realize that Mars is saturated with life. And I am going to demonstrate this in a second, right from their own core sample that they took. Now watch, listen to what they have to say. Sample 24 is called Comet Geyser, and we collected it from the Bunsen Peak Rock on the margin unit. The Comet Geyser sample is really exciting for several reasons. This rock is dominated by silica and carbonate. These phases are known on Earth to be good at preserving biosignatures. Carbonate is a phase that forms in association with fluids such as water, which is really important in our search for evidence for past life on Mars. It's still a bit of a mystery what this rock is. There are interesting textures um, that could be consistent with either an igneous rock or a sedimentary rock. And that's what makes it so exciting to us as scientists is because we get to put our thinking caps on and really try and solve this puzzle. Let's go ahead and do that. Now NASA, they, they, their budget is 22 billion point three, 22.3 billion dollars this year. Let me show you what I think this is, and it's because there is life all over Mars. All right, this is pretty outrageous. That's the one they drilled up on Mars. This is the one I have here in my shop. All right, now I'm going to show it up in the microscope here. It's going to take a second for the light to home in again. You see that? It's the same pattern. All right, there is the red bloody stuff underneath the tissue that's the surface. And if this was in the type of sunlight that they have on Mars, there's very little to stop the radiation. This would just blanch out and it would be all like white looking, just like it is there on the one that came from Mars. They're, they have just broken through that skin. That's just been abraded away. And they're almost into red blood there. That's very, very similar to what you're seeing up here in my sample right there. Now, I had it wet. I'm going to move it over to, and then home down in, and you'll see what blood looks like when it sort of dries up a little bit. All right, now we're down inside of the skin. Just like here, we would be down inside the skin right there. It's, it's exactly the same thing. Identical. All right, mine's a little it's still wet. If it dried out, it would get more looking like that than the other one. But there we are here. And if we back away from the, the tissue part back up here, like I said, I put a little water on there just because you can always see better with water. So it still has a little moisture in there. But the surface doesn't have hardly any. The surface dries out almost instantly. But you see, all of that would turn white. It would all be blanched, really. All the blood stuff would be, would be washed out of it, and it would look virtually identical to what it, you have there on this side. All right, and then this side would be virtually identical to what you have here. I'm going to drill down into it because it's, you know, there's an eighth of an inch or so 
depth before you hit the, the, the tissue layer. All right, now I'm going to come from, instead of looking at it flat this way, we're going to come down and I'm going to show you the separation between the tissue layer and the, the actual tendon. Well, the slurpee and the tendon. All right, this makes it very clear. This is the outside casing of the what they call the slurpee in this in this case of a tendon. Now, I don't know what they were drilling into up in Mars, but they were drilling through something like this and hitting this layer below, which is in this case tendon. And it's much different than the casing that surrounds it, which is the slurpee. Let me see if I can drill down into there. Hold on. All right, so in other words, this is the tendon which would slide up and down. You see it? And that's the slurpee that surrounds it. And this is broken off here, and we can see the tendon fibers. Those are the fibers that go down the connective tissue. All right, and there's more, you know, you, the deeper you get in over here, the more tendon whoops fibers you can see you see these are all tendon fibers and that's the outside casing all right, and then that's the slurpee that surrounds the outside casing and I don't know much how much better I can present it this outside casing, the tendon itself, which is always has a, a membrane on it, that's why it's so red looking. And then the inside layer, which is where all of the the fibrils are, all of these little white spots. All right, so outside the layer going this way, and then all of the white spots coming up are the, are the the integral part. Those are the connective tissues. And there's a ton of them. And that's what a, that's what a tendon's made of. Now what they were looking up looking at up there in Mars, I have no idea. But that that's it right there. And if it was a tendon, it, they'd be cutting through the side of it. And you'd see this below this. So in other words, this is sticking up off of that surface. When they drilled, and the type of drill they have, hold on, I got something here to represent it, hold on. Alright, here's the kind of drill they have. It's like this. So when they came down into this thing, spinning around, it left the core in the center. However, it did disturb this. I'm sure the whole surface was that texture. So they actually broke through the top surface down just like we would have broken through this layer here down to the lower layer here. This is just like they drilled down through here. And they would hit this. But you still see this. So you're seeing this and that at the same time. Same thing. Right down through there. So basically that's, what the, that's how they did it. And that's what they found. And I believe this is what I showed you here. All right, this is another outrageous one. Look at this. Again, that's the skin, and that's just below it. Or skin, fascia, whatever it is. The membrane, and just below it is the, the meaty part. Now, up in here, I got this in a microscope. This is a different one. I believe this could be a liver. I'm not sure, or a kidney. Well, I think it's about liver. But anyway, you see that texture there. Now, I'm going to drill down into this. That's that same as what we would be looking below here as that white. All right, so that's the white. Just consider it that way. And if it was bombarded by cosmic radiation, it would turn white. It would just blanch right out. Now, I'm going to drill down into this. And we're going to see this layer down below is going to be that layer right there. That layer. All right? That's what this layer right there will be. All right, so let's see if I am correct. Yeah, 
Now that looks pretty close to me. Now if I put a little moisture on there, because that's been sitting in my shop 10 years. If I put a little moisture on there, it would look literally identical to that. Because I think there's going to be moisture in these rocks. I'm almost absolutely certain there'll be cavities and in where all the other things like we have here on Earth, voids in the Earth. Now, I'm going to continue on. So we've seen the outside surface. We saw this. Now there's two more layers here. Or actually three. So there's this one now comes next. So top, then this, then this. Then that. Then this. All right, this is something that was highly protected. It's got like one, two, three, four layers deep from the top layer. And that's, and, and they're thick layers, they're not thin layers. So I believe this was, it's an organ. There's virtually no question about that. I'll show it to you in a minute. But now let's, let's watch what happens when I put a little moisture on this. So if we've seen it already. You can always go back and look at it again if you have to. All right, now I'm going to put a little moisture on it. It's going to take a second to dry up. I got a towel here. Somewhere, hold on, over the rainbow. Where are you? All right, I got it. I got it. I got it. We got you. All right, so here we go. We're cleaning it up, drying it off. Let's see what we see now. All right. This is the surface on the top. Let me get that dried up a little better. All right, so here we are at the top. There's the surface now that it's moist. You see? Now we're going to go down here inside. So now we're back to inside and down. Now this is going to have to take a minute to dry off to become, you know, what we want to really see. And a lot's got to do with the light too. This is too, too bright for when it gets wet. It's too reflective. We just have to let this dry up. But you could see when we were up above, that's the top of the skin. They would have drilled down and hit this layer here. And that's the layer we were looking at. In a second, that'll dry up. I'm going to just let this sit down for a second and let that dry up. But then we have these other three or four, three other layers deep. And this is all bloody, muddy, gooey, wet membranous stuff so it's um, to me it's very interesting because most well I don't know I don't know what to say whether I'm right or wrong I, th I, th I always thought they had like an outer layer of skin all right so let's start from the top just like on you you have an outer layer of skin and it's it goes deep enough to where it hits a basement layer and then I guess there's a membrane under that. You know, I got to go back at the anatomy books and, you know, the endothelium, the epithelium, all that stuff. They have different layers, and I guess that's probably exactly what we're looking at. Because we had a top layer, then that layer, then this layer, and then it goes down to that layer, and this layer, I think. I'm going to hold on a second. I'm going to let that dry up and it'll make a little more sense. All right, this is what we're going to be looking at in the microscope. And we're going to be looking at right in this area, right, right down in here where there's some red blood. And you know, I'll show you what we got. And I'll show you the texture of the surface. And, and then it... It's some kind of an organ. I don't know what it is, to be honest, but I think it could be 
a liver or um, or I don't know, a pancreas or who knows what, but it's I, I, it's not a lung. I'm sure sh certain of that. There is no alveoli, but it, it has a very thick, heavy-duty coating around it. So I think it might be something very caustic that's in the body that has to be surrounded by a lot of dense, thick, fibrous stuff. Look, look at how dense that coating is around that organ. That's thick. So I, it's got to be something toxic. <laughs> I, th I would think your body wants to isolate it from you or protect it somehow or, or, or keep it from hurting you. It's just some serious chemistry going on there in my mind. Okay, don't forget now, this is the skin. Down below, I'm seeing red blood from an artery, and that could be the vein. It almost looks like it's plugged off. Now, I don't know why it would be right here, but I am going to show you this. I'm, I'm going to do a catalase reaction. Now, what they should have done, and I don't know, maybe they can even do it, but I doubt it, is to test that with hydrogen peroxide. Now, if they put hydrogen peroxide on there and it bubbles off, it means that was a catalase reaction. And if they put it on where it was red and it bubbled off a lot, you would know that that was where a vein was, I mean an artery. You want to go for the artery. It's got to be red blood to bubble off good. You watch up and, and, it's in, and the um, membranes as well. Membranes are very good at bubbling off. So if this is possibly the vein. It m might not bubble off the vein because the vein, something's different about that. But the red should bubble off and it also should bubble off wherever there's, there's membranes. So we should be getting a very good reaction from this thing. So here I'm going to go put some hydrogen peroxide on. We're going to have to go home way down in, but I'm going to put it off way up from here. I'm probably going to have to get way down on it to see the reaction, but it should react pretty well. That's my feeling. But I have been misled on many an occasion. Alright, so that's the initial dose. And you really can't see anything from up here. Let's get right down on top of it and see if we can see anything from down here. Hmm. Let's see. much of a reaction. Well, not much of a reaction at all. Let me put a little more down in here. Boy, I'm surprised. I'm, lately, this has been gotten me got me confused. I would have suspected, let me get this thing out of here, what is that? I would have suspected to see some fuzzing up. It should. Especially because this, this is some serious amount of membranes. Keep an eye on it. Nada. I say that's a non-reaction. Very interesting. Could this be the source of the chemistry that creates the non-reactivity? This particular type of an organ, whatever it is. 
That should be reacting. That's that's biology on steroids right there. And and biology should have some cal, uh, you know, um, catalase to protect itself from these excess oxygens. This organ doesn't seem to care about excess oxygen. That's a revelation. That's a revelation on its own. I thought every every spot tried to get rid of excess oxygen, and I have found, like I said, I found some the other day. It just blew my mind. I said, "How could this possibly be? Maybe it was next to this type of an organ, and the chemistry here caused the enzymes to die, the catalyst. I mean, the uh, catalase to be uh, what they call denatured. Now it's starting to come to me. Wow." This is a revelation. I mean, seriously, because I couldn't figure this out. I was like saying the other day, I said, I can't, I just can't imagine how this could have happened. This, that was when I had that gigantic, gigantic vein, uh, artery. The thing was this big around, just as big as, you know, my lower part of my leg. Very, 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 I was just shocked that there was no reaction. Now I'm seeing the same thing here. The only thing I can go with is the chemistry that this particular organ, which is right there, is is exuding. Let's take a look at this a little closer. May I see if we can determine what kind of organ it is. I have looked at it and I cannot so far. All right, let's take a look at the where I cut it here, the membrane that surrounds it. And boy, it is thick. It's one of the heaviest membranes I've ever seen. But I haven't. You know what? Anyway. All right, this is the organ, whatever it is, I do not know. But here it is, it's in the microscope, and there's a very thick rind around here we're going to look at in a moment. And then this is just solid black substance, I don't know what. There's a couple of spots on the side here, I suspect, where, where the tubing went into this, whatever it was. So let's look at it in the microscope and see what we can determine about this particular layer that surrounds which is the, you know, the um, coating. Normally they call it fascia, but in this case, I think it's more than fascia. It's a very thick coating. So it's something that protected the organ or protected us from the toxicity that was inside that organ. Because you got things toxic in you and me that, that are just nasty, nasty, nasty stuff. And so when it's doing its nasty, nasty, nasty stuff, you don't want it to be in amongst the rest of your body. I think somewhere down in there, the cavity, that um, that's where it entered. Anyway, let's take a look at that in a microscope, up here in the microscope. i got to turn the lights off. Hold on. All right, I'm just going to let it play as I do what I'm going to do here. First thing I'm going to do, this, first of all, that's the outside the layer outside this is the coating and then this is the inside whatever this thing was i have no clue at this moment but i suspect like i say that it could be some toxic or organ it's dealing with oh, a lot of toxicity now uh so it has to have this very dense layer now that's that's the outside layer and then whatever's happening in there, I don't know. But that's what's happening inside that organ, this, these little black spots. I'm suspecting this is a liver. I'm suspecting this is a liver. And it's, uh, I, I, I just don't know. I have no idea. But a liver would be kind of toxic. And it would need a pretty good separation layer between it and the rest of the body because there's a lot, a lot of toxicity. This layer here is pretty serious. You stay on that side and you stay on this side and everybody's going to be okay. All right, but if that toxicity gets out or this gets in, you got an issue. Now, I want to try with some um, um, hydrogen peroxide. We're going to do a little catalase test. So we're going to have to get up close. All right, but don't forget, the outside of this is this stuff here.
Oh, hold on. All right, this is the furthest out outside layer. And it's the same as any of them. They're, every every one of the the uh, organs has this kind of a a layer on it, and it's all of these little white fibers amongst a sort of a you know a pasty little clay matrix, and um, and that's what makes up this fabric that can twist and distort and and do all kinds of things. Uh, that's the same fabric that is in the lungs and all those other ones. All right, it's just a different amount of fibers and so forth, depending upon how the thing has, has to stretch like that. It's, that's what it seems to me, because the tendons have a ton of them, lungs have just is just completely saturated with them, and other organs have quite a few of them, but not like crazy. All right, so here is what I think could be a liver. Now, what are we looking at right here? Whoops, shaky screen effect. Now, this is the outside layer, and then we get into the inside. Now, that's blood, and this is some kind of an arterial passageway, I believe. This is, is the membrane crack, and hold on. You see going all the way over here? That's a membrane separation between the outside layer and the inside layer. And that comes to where there's some kind of a blood in, in flow there. You know, it's, it's crazy. But that is a separation, quite obviously a separation zone. Now we're going to put some some hydrogen peroxide in there, and I, I would really expect to see some serious action there. But I've been shocked lately. Uh, uh, by, uh, by, well, by the way, this is that same one that we just tried getting inside of an area. It would seem similar to that, and we got no reaction at all. Let's see if we get a reaction here. Okay, this could get a little rocky because I don't know how close I'm going to have to get. And I don't know what's going to happen here. Like I say, I was really shocked there was none in that membrane before. And I'm not seeing anything at all here. This is just over the top. And I think that just solidifies my belief that this particular type of an organ... Well, let's give it a second. Let me be sure I'm right here. I'm not seeing any reaction, are you? Well, actually, maybe. I think it's just drying up. That's, that's the seed. I'm not seeing anything. That should be bubbling and festering like crazy. All right, so whatever this organ is, I believe now this is, it has denatured the enzyme and it's probably associated to denaturing that, that vein that I showed you the other day, that gigantic vein, because there was absolutely no catalase reaction, absolutely, I was stunned. And I did, I said it for about five times in a row, I said, I can't believe this, no catalase reaction whatsoever. All right, there is one spot here which is actually an artery, tiny little red blood vessel. And I saw that bubbling. Let me put a little more on there and you should be able to see it bubbling again. See how it's red? And you should see a little bubble here and there because blood should bubble. And we are seeing a little bubble. Look at they make little spotlights, <laughs> and that would and they would because the bubble makes like a little a little lens. <laughs> oh, this stuff blows my mind every day. See it bubbling up there? That's because it's blood, and there's some over here because that's blood. Look at it, it makes little spotlights.
So these are the ones that'll, that'll bubble off. So anyway, whatever this organ is, the chemistry it's making is, as far as I'm concerned, destroying the enzymes. Now, inside of red blood, that should be bubbling like crazy because it's just red blood. And it's not. It's bubbling enough so that we know, yes, it is red blood. But it's not bubbling like it should. So the enzyme is just barely present. You follow what I'm saying. And there should be tons of it there. And I'm finding this in a lot of the stuff recently, which really had me spooked. I couldn't figure it out. But now it's pretty obvious. That should be bubbling, like just foaming like crazy. Not doing it. This has got me shocked. Virtually nothing whatsoever in that membrane. The only places you see a little spark here and there is where the red blood is. A little oxygen pop. Very, very, very intriguing. Okay, this is that I believe it's a liver, and that's the, the coating, and now we're down into the tissue of whatever this organ is, and that's the tissue right there. Now, let's pan over here. There's some eroded here that you can see to some degree. I can come down in it a little closer in a minute, but this is the normal fabric that met up with the, the layer that was removed. All right, there was a coating on there. So this is just like the normal goo that is between layers of tissue. Back here a second ago, as I showed you, this part here has stripped away the that like gooey coating. And we're into some gnarly-ish stuff. Let me come down here a little bit. All right, you see? See the texture of that? That's stripped away. That's the texture of it, it before it got sort of abraded when that piece got ripped off of there. Now this is what the surface looked like where it met the coating on the outside. Which is, this is pretty standard. That's pretty standard. As a matter of fact, it's standard just like this one right here. Basically the same thing. You have a you have an outside coating, and then you have the lower gooey stuff, which is that. Now you see all those little red dots and everything. I believe this. Well, hold on. Let me get it wet, and then we'll take a look at it. But remember what you're seeing there. Hold on. Because I don't know what's going to happen when it gets wet. But normally you can see it a lot better. Sometimes it just gets real blacky looking. And then this over here is where it got eroded out. So we'll take a look at, I'll probably start with this and this at the same time and see what difference it makes. Alright, so here it is moistened up. And this down here is the coating, which is broken off here, obviously. Now this part right here was where it was broken away. And this is the matte part back here that this is a little scruffy looking versus the stuff back there up here. Let's see now it's got it's it, 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 like I said sometimes it gets black blacked out which this basically does look that. But as it dries up you see all those little red spots. All right, this is, it takes some time to do this research. You can't just look at it and say, well, that's it, have a nice day. No. You've got to look at it and then come back and look at it again. But these little quartz pieces in here, were, were, were there was some kind of little voids for whatever reason. But primarily, it looks to me like this is heavy-duty metals. You know, I, I don't have money to have these things tested and so forth, what actually the chemistry is here. But to me, I look at things and I understand when metals get together, they form black stuff. 
think of it that way. There's so many different colors it's, of the metals, it's amazing. Transition metals are, um, are very interesting. Now, you're starting to see the red show back up again. As this dries out, the red takes over. You see it already, you got some nice serious red there. And all those spots will come back again. Alright, it's like watching paint dry. <laughs> but, um, it, 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 if I don't see how anybody can dismiss that that's biology. And, like I say, this, these are so well preserved. All you have to do is drill down into that spot, right, right there. You drilled right down into it. And then get rid of that, clean it all out, dust it out, and then drill a little deeper in there and take whatever you can out of there that's red. Because I, th I believe this could very well be an artery or, you know, some kind of blood vessel. And this could, these are, could be some more, I don't know. They sure look pretty red to me. You know what, I should do a catalase test. I'm going to do a catalase test on this as well. And th I'm finding this interesting. Before I do the catalase test, I want to wait around here for a few minutes. You see how that's dark, and that's dark, and that's dark? Why are those dark patches? I believe there's something different about them. I'm going to let them dry up for a bit, but they do seem to have a central core. But it's black, because it could be vein. But it's, it doesn't look like artery. Artery is red. Vein is black. And this is absolutely artery up here. And then I would think this right over in this area sure looks like vein blood. But that right there I would say is an artery, red artery. Let's do a little catalase test on that one. But this is all biology. It's time to look at this stuff and understand it. Okay. Fire in the hole. Now, okay, now I'm seeing, at least I'm seeing the membrane react. Because I could see that membrane. I was wondering if that might react. And I can see it is now. Right there, you see that? That's what I expect from a membrane. Is that fuzz. I'm going to get right down on top of it. You're going to see it like fuzzy fuzz, like a foam. And that's what you expect to see from a real functioning membrane. See the foam? Really hard to focus in on this. You see over here, you see, it's, it's all foam, because this is all one big membrane. You see the bubbles coming out of here? Like I said, this is almost like whipped cream, this kind of foam. And that's what you want to see from a, a good functioning membrane. Whatever this particular spot has that good functioning membrane quality where it's protecting itself from the from the cattle uh, from the hydrogen peroxide now I'm going to put some more on there and in that same spot 
it should react again, I would assume. Let's give that a try. watch for. Let me turn the lights down a little bit. I don't know if you can see that or not. It's a white foamy look to it. Watch up there. Watch over there. It's all over, but it's so it's so tiny that bubbles. So this is as close as I can get to it. We're right up on top of it. You can see them popping here, popping there. And what they're doing is there's catalase in here. So that's a catalase reaction. When you see these bubble on like that. They're, they're trying to kill off the extra oxygens. All right, so anyway, that just shows you this, this thing is organic, no question about it. All right, let's see what we can see about this thing, just the size of it and so forth. This, I, I'm not sure what happened. Well, I, I cut this off just to see what was inside of this rock. And then I sort of break things apart and see what's, you know, it's what you call brutal geology. And, and then I use a saw and I cut some pieces here and there. So I don't know what the heck this was and I don't know what this did. Whether this went to somewhere, but I, I, this is what we got now. So this is what we got to work with. Now, this is the organ that is coated by this heavy-duty membrane. It's like pleura. But I can tell you what, this is not a lung. In my mind, there's no way in the world you could say this was a lung. There is no alveoli in here. So I have to go with, at this point, I'm going with liver. Now, it has to have plumbing. And I believe this is where the plumbing came in, right here. Right through this spot and maybe some other spots here, but I believe right there is one of the main plumbing spots. And if there's any doctors out there that know what to look for here, I'm going to look at this in the microscope, these particular areas with a little moisture on them. But that would, as far as I'm concerned, that's got to be the entryway into this thing. And then, I don't know, boom, 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 artery vein maybe in this, I don't know. And then whatever that is, lymph node. I'm going with liver. I'm going to look up the plumbing of the liver and see if that plumbing corresponds to this, to this at all. And then, it's got to be some kind of an organ. And I'm, 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 I'm like 100% certain it's not a lung. It's not a heart. No question whatsoever, it's not a heart. The only thing left is a liver. It would have that kind of chemistry to be that kind of black and that kind of heavy duty protective coating. That's my take on it right now. Again, I could be wrong. And, but I'm going to look up the plumbing and see, because that's the only place I can see something entered. Now, what that was over there, who knows? I never documented looking at this. Well, I'm going with that to be the major. Yep, I'm going to go with liver. All right. You see these spots right here? It's, it's, it's a, some kind of a similarity to me. And other than that, it's just sort of flat and rounded. And there's a point over here that points out. Maybe that's that. I don't know. But it has very little going on 
other than these spots right here. There's this thing, which would either be right up here. Yep, I, that's the yep, that's the one that was missing. Like that's the big one. Yep, I would go with that's right there. So this is like a, re, a mirror image of this. These things are over here, and this thing is over there. And the aorta apparently goes right through the center. You see it? And the liver cleans the blood. All right, yeah, I'm going to have to go with liver. You, you got the aorta coming in down the bottom. Remember those three little things I showed you? Boom, boom, boom. One of them is big and two of them are kind of small. Then this thing here I found where that attaches. That's gone. I could find the attachment. Now, this we're going to be looking at up in the microscope. That's a vein. Veins have valves in them. So they clamp off and the blood is encapsulated in these little plugs. So you would have all the clotting fiber would be stuck within each one of these plugs. And that's what we're seeing right here. This is what's coming out of that lung. Uh, I'm sorry, out of that um, liver. And I believe this is the, the exit out for the vein. And I believe this is all the fiber and clotting fiber that is still in that, that blood. And it may even just be that little hole right there. It's hard to tell. But, uh, you know, something that I forgot all about was how much lichen loves black blood, the, the, the vein blood, and how moss loves the red blood. And this has white spots all around this area. And they may be, this may even be lichen, I don't know. But I'm, I'm pretty sure this is where that, that um, vein valve came out. And I'll show it to you right here, because the plumbing fits exactly correctly. Now, I'm going to turn the lights on. And I'm going to show you right now how the plumbing works. This is the, the liver, what it looks like. Now, this is our liver here. What I was just showing you is right up here. All right, it's basically right up there. All right. right below it, you see that? It was right there. This is what I was showing you, all that white stuff. And you see all this? This is all lichen. <laughs> it loves black blood. So I believe it ran out of here, which would be that right there. All right, and these are the three little spots at the bottom. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. You see them? And then there's this one over here. Where was it? I guess it's over here. Yeah, right there. Which is what would have hooked into that right there. Which is broken off. So there's the three, boom, boom, boom. There's the little one would have broken off right from there. That's gone. These three are here. And then at the top, or straight up from those three, is this. All right. And then there's a little, you know, this is, I, I'm going with a, a liver. I'm going with a liver. I, I got to go with a liver. All right, you see this right here? They have all these little bundles and all that stuff. And then what the liver looks like, this is it in a microscope. It's exactly identical. If I can hold it still, you see it? That's a cut slab straight across. That's exactly what it is. And then, of course, you've got the skin around it. You see here, that's the... You see it? That's the coating that coats it. Very thick. Very thick. And that's what's inside. is identical to the anatomical picture below. Let me stop for one second. And look at all those little white dots. 
in that blackness. Very, very similar. And the spots are right in the correct spots. Okay, my friends, I'm going to wrap it up with a montage of things about Devil's Tower. I started with Devil's Tower. That's the wrinkle zone. By now, you should understand what we're looking at here is biology. Those are the same tendon fibers as we have here. And they have the same coating on them, which is the Slurpee, as I have on this one, which is the Slurpee. Okay, the same stuff. The tendon slides inside that. I know I've shown this in great detail, so if you haven't seen it, go back and look again. Now, what do we have next? Alright, we got this one. Well, Devil's Tower. Now, th that body was coated with flesh just like every other body is. And what happened was the flesh eroded all over the place. This is red flesh and some bony stuff. And that was where the Achilles heel was. Now, th this is why it's green, going so green right here. And somebody said, with the size of this guy, if that was his Achilles heel, that could ex actually be a penis. I mean, it's got the look. <laughs> now, look, look at all of the red blood everywhere. All that red is from his body. And that's why everything's growing so green. Blood makes everything grow green. Flesh makes it grow very green. Now, this is a shot. I think I've shown this before, but this is a shot you rarely see, which is the Achilles tendon heading up this way. It's not just perfect straight up. You know, they go from the back, from the back and so forth, but you get from the side, you get this. And these angles here, and you see all of the little green stuff starting to grow right here. This is where it starts infusing into flesh, where the tendon actually met and turned into a ball at the bottom. And now it's all flaking off and all of the fibers are flaking off, but that's the abrupt transitions first of all and this is the wrinkle zone and here is what is important to see this is all as I showed you before that's this stuff right here that's this stuff all right mine's nice and flat on all the sides except this one here has the wrinkles on it and that's that wrinkle stuff now over here it's actually peeling off this guy should be careful because this stuff is going to peel off and he's, got, he's, he's not in good shape to be in a place where it peels off. But look at the size of those things. It's the same thing as this, it's that the size of them is substantially larger. Here we have another crazy person. <laughs> I can't see the appeal, to be perfectly honest with you. Look at this stuff. That's going to fall off. This guy's going to grab something and think he's hanging. Well, you know, they know I, I'm sure they know what they're doing. The, the guy's not dead yet. Some idiot put this corn, sweet baby corn roots underneath the devil's tower and put it on there. Oh, it's a tree. It's a tree. It's not a tree. Trees did not do well during the Great Flood. They just didn't make it. It's because of the hot, salty waters. Just didn't make it work out. This is just nothing but flesh. And these are just layers of ribs or something. And that's why everything's growing very, very green. Green, 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 green. They love that redness. All right, when the tendons come in, they make a very distinctive pattern, and the wrinkle zone is very distinctive. And what else do we have here? I've shown you this. That's, you see how the, the pattern, very distinctive. And where the, the blood vessels are here is where the green things are growing out of the blood vessels, literally. They're literally growing out of the blood vessels. Now, um, this is somebody did, uh, this shows how big the foot really would be. A friend of mine did that, I can't remember who did it, but 
I thank them, whoever it was. Now, this shows where I believe the second foot was. Right here. This is where the other foot is. And the guy fell over and just dissolved all over the place here. <laughs> that's just what happened. And that's all I could come up with for the second foot. And one of them would go deep in the ground, trying to push the guy up out as he was drowning. This was in a hot, salty, boiling hot water flood. The guy's cooking as he's standing there, and he's probably trying to push one foot up from the other through the mud, and one of them's up and one of them's down, and this is the one that was up. All right, there it is from the... And here's some more of his body is laying all over out here. Because that's the inclination of the body would go that way. You see how distinct? Uh, what else we got? These are the wrinkle zone again. Very, very distinct. You can't miss it. And that's where red blood was running out. And the moss loves red blood. Yellow and orange moss and white lichen love the black blood. But where you have red blood, you have green moss. It makes everything go very, very green. Uh, let's see what else. All right, this is a different situation. I believe this is probably a shoulder or something like that, where the tendon is coming up as a bundle to meet up like a, a, at a shoulder joint or something. It's not a leg. It's absolutely not a leg or an Achilles tendon like at Devil's Tower. Absolutely not. However, it is an abrupt transition and the wrinkles on. All right, so the muscle snapped off here. And it went boing, and that's the wrinkle zone. Same thing, only it's, this is coming up to a bundle where it locks in. The other one is just the foot coming up, the tendon from the leg. I don't think I showed you this, but everything, every, almost 50% of all rocks make up aluminum silicates. And aluminum silicates is feldspar. These are all feldspar. Everything, basically, almost everything is feldspar. But inside, it's not feldspar in most cases. Now, the feldspar is a name given to a group of naturally occurring aluminosilicate minerals. Aluminosilicates. Well, what's aluminosilicate mean? Aluminum and silicates. Aluminosilicates. And where is that on a periodic chart? one click under phosphorus. And what is phosphorus? Well, phosphorus makes the membranes and the coating, which is basically um, collagen and collagen gooey substances. All right, phosphorus is in your membranes, the phospholipid membranes. There's two layers, and they're made out of phosphorus and silica and, and gooey substances, fatty stuff. And then when it boiled down, they boiled down from the phosphorus down to the aluminol silicates. And then they have all kinds of other things in them. And all your gemstones and all that is, are, are all silicates too. They're all silicates in a crystalline form, you know in a really organized shape. But they have seed crystals in them that also give them colors. And here's the colors. All right, you see this? These are, these are transition metals. And they are in watery substances. And when they float through and during the, the uh, Great Flood, and all that hot water and boiling all of these things out, they were floating free and they could find a way to bond with whatever they could bond with to become stable. And sometimes it's just absolutely incredible. The opals are just, well, you know what opals look like, but opals can be just so spectacular. It's just amazing. Complete heart, absolutely perfect. And all opal, all these colors, because your heart is filled with blood. And your heart is filled with blood, and blood is filled with metals. And metals are these. And they're the things that carry things around in your body. You have to do a little study to understand this, but it's not hard to understand. They're the, they're the little attachments. These pluses, all that, plus two, three, four, five, six, seven, they, that means 
they can pinch on to other things that have those negative potentials. So they find some guy that's a, a negative four, and they go, yeah, I got a four, you give me four, we'll hook together, we'll go somewhere. If somebody else wants to give me something and take you, well, I'll go along with that. And that's what happens. It carries them, trip, drops them off, and picks something else up. So these are absolutely essential in their body, transition models. You see that? I just showed you all those transition metal colors. There they are. And that's a opal heart. It's in the Yoa region in Australia, which is just a saturated blood scab. So everything had the ability to get any transition metal it wanted because it was just, it's just soaked in blood. And this is what they did. They, t they became stable with something. So some green particle or whatever it was. It might be two or three different metals. And they att attached to whatever this membrane's specific chemistry was to make it stable, and that's what happened. Now, this heart was laying this way. That was down, and this side was up. And that's because the plasma rises. Metals are denser and heavier. They drop to the bottom. And it would have been laying flat like this, and that would have been up. And then all the other things just bonded to the best they could bond, find somebody that would stabilize them, and zip, you end up with that. All right, here's what it says right here. Ironically, two of the hardest and best known gem materials are not silicates. Diamond is not a silicate. And corundum, which is ruby and sapphire, they're oxides, they're not a silicate. However, most of the rest of the best known gemstones are indeed silicates. They are silicates. And that, what does that mean? They're right over here, silicate. All right, the silica, and this, this came from the Great Flood where the silica ooze, salacious ooze, you can look it up, the, the ocean floor is covered with salacious ooze, and it all sloshed to the surface. And when it did, all the things that were have cavities in them, the, 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 the silicon filled right in. So it went right into the, even all of this stuff is all saturated with silicon. I, I told you, saf I mean, um, felspar is aluminum silicates. Silicon is one of the most pervasive things on the face of the planet, and phosphorus is too, because they, they, they relate to membranes. And everything that was alive had a membrane. You know, they're all creatures. When they die, that membrane turns into aluminum silicates. All right, just to show you, the phosphorus is widely found in compounds and minerals, found in large quantities in the U.S. and elsewhere because they're membranes. And some of these creatures, the membranes were really, really, really thick. I mean thick. All right, you see this? When I say big, I'm talking big, big, big creatures. This is a phospholipid bilipid membrane. Phosphorus, phosphorus, primarily. See, phospholipid. Well, the lipids are the fatty stuff that runs through here. Cholesterol, and these channels allow things to flow through here, in and out, depending upon, literally, the charge on the molecules. Now, this has to be floppy and move around, but stay glued together. That's where all that, that slurpy comes from. It, gl it literally glues it together. And when this thing boiled, a lot of that stuff boiled out and just left these little balls looking things and it's the holes and all of the floppy stuff boiled out. And I can show you this in very, very, very large detail. Um, Tyson Carlson has a channel, Tyson's Mud Fossil Adventures. And he has a site that he's been working that shows a layer like this, a layer up here, a layer like here, and in between it's missing. So we're going to see this layer in here and then washed, that layer washed off and then a layer way up above that's sticking out of the mountainside. And I'll show you this right now. It's on the ocean shore. All right, so you've seen what a bilipid phosphomembrane is. This is the phospho layers. This is the fatty lipids that are in between the layers. And these are the channels that allow 
things to pass between these things. This is why it's a membrane, it's a barrier, and it only allows what it wants to allow. Now, if this was big, what would it look like? If it was real, real, real big? Well, it might look like that. It might look just like that. Okay, I'm going to make this real simple. They're talking about junctions between all the cells. Every cell has to bump into another cell. It's the formation of these little cellular bundles that have to have junctions around it. So recent advancements is... <laughs> all right. Remember I told you that these are bilipid phosphomembranes. Lipids. Lipids are fats. Recent advancements and visualizing and seeing these things in membrane lipids are essential regulators of various membranes such as microvilli. Numerous membrane structures have characteristic morphologies such as tight junctions in epithelial cells. Well, let's look at this in a little more detail, that specific tight junctions in epithelial cells, numerous membranes, because you have a membrane on your skin, on your eyeballs, you have them on everything. All, even red blood cells have membranes, and they're all a little, pretty similar, they're all a little bit different. Depends on what chemistry it's protecting. But they're all tied together in this one huge system called the fluid-filled highway. So there has to be some separation of chemistry so you don't have the same fluid-filled highway molecules around your, your liver as you would have around your lungs. They're going to be two different types of chemistry protecting or sequestering different types of chemistry. All right, your lung is, is, is a little delicate, but it's got tight junctions, that I know for sure. The rest of the things, pretty much almost everything, I think they should, should have tight junctions. They talk about tight and loose junctions. Well, a loose junction to me just means it's more movable. A tight junction means it's going to be tight and it can roll and do all that stuff and move this way and that way, but it never goes much. A loose junction is still going to be tight, but it's going to be movable and floppable and doing all this stuff like tendons. All right, they can move a distance. Muscle fibers move a very good long distance. All right, so that's, but they're all membranes. All right, so this, this is important to understand. And I know it sounds confusing, but it's really not. Between every one of these little cells, there is this little ridge. You see that little ridge around them all? Originally, before this got all washed out with the salt waters and all that, that was filled with a gooey substance, like some kind of gooey, you know, some kind of gooey jelly-like stuff. Think of it that way. But, but it's fibrous enough that it was holding on to these and it could not open up to be invaded. That's the key. Loose junctions, when you, not, this is called leaky gut. If this was a gut membrane and it opened up there, this thing split apart, whatever's going through your gut is, is going to go into your body. That's what people are, are, are predisposed to, to getting infections and this and that. They have, in my mind, a lot of that has to do with leaky gut. And I think they're coming around to understanding that. Now, this is a, a by lipid. Bi means two. Lipid means fats. Phospho means phosphorus. Now, there would have been all kinds of gooey stuff in here. It's washed out. These are the protein channels that allow things to go in and out. And where did they go? They went through the fluid-filled layer, which was here, and then out through the top layer. This is, a, this is the layers. Two layers. I think this was six or eight feet, something like that, between here and here. This is huge, absolutely not enormous. And that's the layering of the membrane. 
That's a membrane. I, there's no way in the world you can convince me that's not a membrane. First of all, it's got the protein channels. Secondly, it's got all of these little bumps, which they show in anatomically absolutely perfectly round. That's not the case. The, well, it's not the case here anyway. Now, I can see all these little, little attachments here on the sides of all of them. And you just take a, a putty gun and just squirt it in all through there and it has to stay mobile and flexible and move and all of that's going to move up and down in your body and go this way and that way but you can't pull those apart if you pull them apart you're invaded that's the key you cannot pull them apart pulling apart means invasion pull those apart you're invaded all right so there that's a bilipid membrane so we're talking pretty good sized creatures here. And that's, and same thing with Devil's Tower. That's almost 1,300 feet tall, something like that. It's a quarter of a mile tall. And the wrinkles on. Just like a tendon comes out, you know, they break a tendon, that's what happens. Uh, I think I'm gonna leave it at that. That's my montage. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? <laughs> now, how long ago this was that they were this big? These were from the flood. The ones that I'm showing you, virtually everything I have was from the Great Flood. And I am in a Triassic zone area. You know, so my stuff is, and most of the, most of everything is. This, this turned to solid stones and you start picking them up and looking at them and then the ones like I say this thing up here on Mars that right there is exactly like this oh you see even the texture of this because this is wrinkled and that's a little bit wrinkled too and then you got this here is when they drilled down through it and hit there, I show this, it's exactly the same. And then this gets all fractured up in the end, just like this. You see? Because it's just, it's a really hard substance for some reason. Well, I don't know. I think I can just leave it at that. It's pretty conclusive to my way of thinking. When they drilled through that, I showed they went through this, which is the outside layer which is that and then they hit this which is the inside layer and I can show exactly almost identical to what they have here literally identical all right so I think it's time to pay attention to what I'm presenting and you know you're spending 20 billion dollars for NASA and they keep asking the same questions over and over. I've been presenting this for years. And all it has to do is take a look at it. That's all I'm asking. But I, I get no response to the questions I ask. So I think I've made a pretty good presentation of what these things are. I think it's time to look at the reality of the situation because no, no more additional funding is going to change the situation. Okay, I'm going to leave it at this. I've been trying to present this to NASA, which I did present it to them about the Mogi Marbles, the Mars Crab, the, um, the Morse Code, the Mars Morse Code, all of that stuff. And now here, the same thing. I'm showing evidence to support what I'm saying. And I've shown over and over about the Mars crab, this is nothing more than an artery servicing sarcomeres, very, very evident. Mars Morse code is nothing more than interstitium. And uh, the Mars blueberries are nothing more than the same thing here on Earth, which is the Mars, uh, I mean the uh, uh, Moki marbles. And those are all from the skin, the interstitial of the skin, from giant, 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 giant creatures. That is not my, it's not my duty to explain how they ate and who they played with and, you know, any of that stuff. I can't help you with that. 
All I can say is what I'm showing you and providing the chemistry, the anatomy, all the stuff. To and they're going back to the ancient text, what they said. And this is what they said. It's what it is. And it's not, it didn't happen that long ago. And we've been just listening to people that say, oh, you have to say this or you're just stupid. No, you have to question that. And then if they won't question it back, then who's stupid? To have this kind of evidence and my DNA tests and CAT scans and all my giant stuff, everything supports what I am claiming to be factual and true. And the same thing happened to Velikovsky, this happened to me. It's identical, same thing. So, that's what it is. But when you look at this, I'm pretty sure this is tendon, just like this. All right, and these are the actual fibers. Coming this way, see, broken, broken, broken. That's how, that's how tendon would go. And they drill right through that which is just what I show here. I'm pretty sure that's a tendon. All right, you see how it's coming here? It's broken right there and it comes out. That's how tendons do. They have an abrupt transition and then they come out into muscle. And then that would go into the muscle. That's what I'm seeing now. Not that I'm really looking at it close. All right, follow me around with this. Wow, another revelation. I'm telling you, you, if you keep looking at things, you understand. Let me back off here. Now, you see this broken right off here? Snap, 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 snap. And these little lines coming off of here. And then this snapped off like bundles looking stuff out here. That's going into muscle. That's another abrupt transition. That's the abrupt transition of the tendon. This is the abrupt transition of the muscle. That's exactly what it is. This is tendon, and when they drilled through it, they drilled through exactly what I have here, identical stuff. Because it is identical, and now I realize why. It is a tendon. That's a tendon. All right, remember that look, broken off here straight across, and then out here bundly looking things. Let me show you what a muscle looks like in a mud fossil. All right, I'm pretty certain now that that is the tendinous material as it transitions into muscle. And they, they have abrupt transitions. Let me show you a muscle here in my shop. You see over here? These are the bundles we were just looking at. They have abrupt transitions. That one there broke right like this, but it starts from a place right here, which is another abrupt transition. So don't forget, we saw these straps coming down. All right, remember we saw the straps coming down, and then they stopped at these bundles. Let's look at it again. All right, here's the straps coming down from an abrupt transition straight across there coming down and if you look close you can see they're separate little straps I see there's some kind of shadow or something on here oh that's the shadow of the rover now at the end you get into this which is this is weak stuff and that's exactly what happens when you get into the muscle. So you've come right from here, really tough stuff. And then you pretty abruptly get into the muscle. And that's what I say this is. All right, and they drill a hole in here somewhere. Now, let's look at mine again. All right, don't forget what we were just looking at. There's the abrupt transition. Here's the straps coming. All right, and then there's the abrupt transitions. Right there, and th th that one there, it seems they're straight across. And normally they do, they go straight across. And this is tendon over here. This, I have it rotated upside down so they could see it easily, but this, this, was laying this way, flat, because the blood ran out of the arteries up here and dribbled down. 
right? That's the pink muscle, and that's the abrupt transition. See, there's another one right there. They just snap right off. And it, normally there's going to be a whole series of them that just happen right in a row, and that's what you, that's the one that you can see in that other picture there. And this actually, this is the whole piece the, from this. The bone up here, I don't have in this picture, but that is the bone. This is the same rock. That right there is the abrupt transition, and from there, it came out with those, with this here, and then broke off abruptly. Okay, it came out with those straps, and then it, it just broke off abruptly, and that one broke off like, I don't know where, but say straight across there somewhere. But they're, they're loaded with abrupt transitions. All right, I think I'm going to call it quits for today. But I, I think maybe I already showed you this. Almost all of the gemstones are silicates fused in with those transition metals. Now, diamond is not a gemstone, really. <laughs> you know, diamond is carbon. It's just different. It's lower on the periodic chart here. Silicon is right above it. The silicon has the same bonding characteristics, but it can bond with a, a, a big variety of things. Carbon can only bond with itself to, to make a crystalline pattern. Basically, that's the difference between it. Well, ironically, two of the hardest and best known gem materials are not silicates. Diamond primarily. The other ones are ruby and sapphire. They're oxides, so they're not fully an atom. An oxide means that they're, they're not stable. Think of it that way. But gemstones are, um, are silicates. All right, here's a shocker du jour for you. <laughs> this just hit me. I can't believe it. Every day it's something new. Sapphires and rubies. All right. They have different colors. Well, guess what? Blue sapphires are the most common. Sapphires. Blue sapphires are the most common. Rubies. Rubies are the red variety. <laughs> Those are the most common. Well, guess what's in your blood? It's blue and red. <laughs> blue sapphires are going to be from your veins. Red sapphires are going to be from your arteries. <laughs> and then they grow into these crystals. And that was probably inside of an, of an artery. And they, ha they have all kinds of different colors because they have all kinds of different transition metals because your body has all different transition metals. That originally was an, ar uh, an artery. And as it crystallized, it made itself into a form. You know, they throw through crystals, they all get crystals. Now, as far as I'm concerned, the blue and the red is the same as it is in your body, blue and red blood. Now, this is what blood is in the body, it's red and blue. Now, in the mud fossils, when it gets exposed to the oxygen and all the other types of things that happen to it, it turns, if the red stays red, the blue turns black primarily because of the oxygenation or deoxygenation, I'm not sure, but it, it turns black. It turns into magnetite. The other is hematite. Two different, but both iron. It's just this FeO2, Fe2O2 is this blue. Fe2O3 has the extra oxygen, O3, instead of O2. And that's the red, and that's the stuff you consume. Your body uses that oxygen. But the red and the blue is what sapphires and rubies are. Okay, that's it for today, my friends. But I have some stunning new information that will be coming out in the next video. But don't forget, these are the best known of all the gemstones are the silicates. And they are 
The reason that they're so spectacular looking is because they hook up with these transition metals. All right, and they form different colors and hues and all kinds of things. All right, I love you all. But just keep moving forward and trying to learn this stuff. This is biology. This is not just random rocks laying around and got there from no apparent reason. This is biology. And as far as I'm concerned, I can find nothing, and I mean nothing, that is not from biological source. Not a thing that I can find. And if you can present me with something, I'd like to see it. All right, so this is Roger. I love you. Take care of yourself. We'll meet again, my friends.